A good measure of emotional maturity is how you respond to criticism and how you respond to people around you, picking apart any of the inaccuracies in the things you say. An example of this is the YouTuber Chud Logic. Whenever he's asked in some of his comment sections to just explain or expand on any of the points he's made, or people just ask, to be honest, quite friendly or not very harmful questions and people that try to mediate in the middle, he just bans them from the channel and hides their comments. This is now becoming somewhat of a meme. A lot of people have sent me their comments that have been deleted and the comments that he deletes are the ones that are usually nice, the ones that just ask him valid questions because he knows he can't dispute them. So noticing that my comment got a load of likes then all of a sudden disappeared from his channel, I went over to one of his live streams to ask him and then I noticed my messages weren't appearing in his live stream. So yes, he's hidden my comments. I went over to Kick to ask him the same question. And this is how a man, which I'm assuming he's in his late 20s, maybe early 30s, this is how a fully grown adult man responds to any form of questions or criticisms. Hey dude, I commented on one of your recent videos politely asking you some valid questions and you hid my comment as soon as it started getting likes. I think if I remember correctly, um, I probably hid it because it was really long and it was funny to delete it. I mean, saying that you did it for the meme and that it was funny, like it's not an inside joke for your community because none of your inside community would have seen it because you deleted it pretty fast. I think it was probably more likely to do with the fact that I raised some good points and you couldn't answer them. Or by answering them, it would indeed prove you're lying. I've just tried to comment on a YouTube stream. You've hidden my comments. I pointed out how you had repeatedly lied and misrepresent people. Um, literally don't care. Good luck to you. Get fucked, loser. Chill out, dude. <laughs> Cheese. But wait, how did we get here? So recently, there's been a bit of a feud between Dark Viper and Chud Logic. Now, the reason why I'm weighing in on this debate is because I care massively about fair use policy and copyright law. Being a YouTube editor for a number of years, I've had to learn how copyright law works on YouTube and also what can and can't be used and what's considered fair use and what isn't considered fair use. Now, normally these disputes are settled quite easily, but in this instance, a YouTuber called Chud Logic took a video from another creator, played the video in its entirety, and at the end, added another like 20 minutes or so of commentary over the top to weigh in on his opinions. Whilst I understand the commentary community space, and whilst I respect the fact that this guy wants to share his opinions on a video, he doesn't necessarily need to share the whole of the video. Now in this video, I'm gonna use clips from Chud Logic's videos, but I'm also gonna use them in a sense that applies to fair use. So you'll only see a couple of clips at a time and me dissecting the points he makes. I'm not gonna play the full hour and a half video of his in its entirety, I'm just going to use some small segments. And throughout this video, I'm going to attempt to expose Chud Logic for the person he is, which apparently is not a very nice person. When presented with facts and statements that completely debunk some of the ideology that he has, he just resorts to calling people gay, autistic, or saying that they have HIV. Real smart and intelligent dude, I'll tell you that. But firstly, I'm going to go to a clip of Dark Viper explaining the situation so you can kind of hear roughly the idea of what's happened here. As you likely know, I'm not unfamiliar with people knowingly or unknowingly misrepresenting me on the internet, but this is the first time that YouTube's own screw up caused this to happen. On November 10th, 2023, I submitted a takedown notice to YouTube because someone re-uploaded one of my videos. A fairly standard procedure, usually met with no resistance and something I've done for years. This time though, YouTube wrongly rejected this notice, then proceeded to four months ignore literally every email sent to them by me or my lawyer, instead firing back an automated response every single time. It took YouTube a further three months to finally respond on March 20th, 2024. It was at this point they finally actually read the case and took down the video I submitted a takedown notice to, something they should have done on day one. Now in my opinion, this is a very well thought out process is explaining what's gone and what's happened. Now let's just head over to Chud Logic to see what he has to say. I have no friends. I have no life. I have no girlfriend. I barely see my family. One more time if you missed it. I have no friends. I have no life. I have no girlfriend. I barely see my family. And one more time, just for luck. Yeah, in the first few minutes of the stream, he just plays that clip over and over and over again. So let's just move on. I've had to crop off the chat from Chud's stream because some of the stuff being said is genuinely revolting. Now, Chud, you've said in your original stream that you're a parent. Clearly, you take great pride in being a father. You should really have a bit of reflection on some of the people you're communicating with online. And the people that you're communicating with seem to think that some of the stuff they're saying is acceptable. Now, I'm of the opinion that anything can be joked about. I don't think that jokes should ever be limited or refrained due to politics, whatever it might be. However, it's very clear that a lot of what your chat is saying during the stream goes a bit beyond being a joke. Maybe you should do a bit of internal reflection with your audience and figure out who has the better community. So after Dark Viper explained the situation in one of his videos, Chud then went onto a stream to respond to it. But 
Wow. So anyway, I haven't actually watched the video. No idea. No clue. Literally no clue what's going on. Well, to be honest, that's not a surprise because so far you haven't been able to dissect any of the points that I've made, any of the points that anyone on Twitter has made, any of the points that Dark Viper has made. All you do is deny, deny, deny and call people gay. So we're just going to completely disregard this bit of the video. It takes a certain level of maturity to be able to watch when you're being criticised and listen if valid points are being made. The fact that you won't even listen to assess whether any valid points are being made just shows what sort of person you really are. Dark Viper is one of these people who, in the moment, on like a live stream, when he's asked about something like this, will act like a little pussy. Really? Really? Um, literally don't care. Good luck to you. Get fucked, loser. Because there were clips at the time of when he originally filed this of people going to his stream and asking questions. I think Keemstar and Nicholas DiOrio went to his stream and asked him questions about it. And he was a little sheepish freak about it at the time and didn't want to fucking answer it. But then what he's done is he's gone away and gone to his little editing suite, right? Where he can record as many takes as he wants so he doesn't sound like a sniveling freak and recorded some fucking response video. Please remember here that Chud is in the wrong. He has violated copyright law. And of course, his video on Chud Logic was justified. Now, it's important to remember here, during this clip of Judd Logic, he doesn't say what stream this was, doesn't show any reference to what questions he was asked, doesn't explain the context of the situation around this. For all we know, it could have been a gaming stream or a speedrunning stream where Diet Viper wasn't taking questions and he was focusing on the stream. However, if someone comes to my stream and starts asking me loads of questions repeatedly over and over again, and I'm not talking on that topic, I will probably just say to them, well, I'll make a video about it. I understand your points, let me dissect it in a video. Because sometimes in a video, it's way easier to articulate and put together your thoughts and opinions than it is on a live stream. And as you've proven by this very live stream that I'm referencing here, you're not very good at articulating your points and opinions. And all of the people you've mentioned there make a living off using other people's content to create drama, talk about drama. And albeit, that being said, I could be essentially doing the same thing here, but I'm just taking a leaf out of your book. And yes, Keemstar is gonna be biased in this. He makes a living out of clipping other people's content and reporting on YouTube drama. I don't think Keemstar was weighing in to take someone's side. He was weighing in to get a good story and a load of clicks. It's just good YouTube etiquette. Um. <laughs> the thing is about it as well is like he's kind of attacked everyone like all of the commentary people he's gone after um, because a lot of them don't agree with his absolutely fucking rabid campaign. Yes, he's gone after people that wrongfully steal other people's content that doesn't apply to the fair use policy and is overall a violation of legal copyright laws in both the UK, the US, Australia and most westernized countries. There's nothing at all inconsistent about this. I unfortunately do have a life. So I don't have time to, uh, you know, contend with this fucking autist filing endless DMCA's against my channel, so. Yet, you've produced three hours of content off the back of it. <laughs> also, all of his arguments um, are probably the same. His arguments haven't really changed much since his 14 page meticulously written document. Yes, his arguments are the same and they haven't changed because the point still stands. Wrongfully stealing people's content is bad. He's not going to change his stance on that. I think more to the point, he was trying to dissect the points you're making and he's done so fairly, as well as many other people have. But whenever people ask you a question about this or try to dissect one of your points or comment on one of your videos, you ignore them. I wonder why. It's also worth noting here that Dark Viper's 14 page document that you're obsessed with obviously contains a lot of his opinions, but most of what it consists of just explains copyright law. This is not something that's up for debate. Through copyright law, you can't upload the entirety of someone else's works. You can of course reference sections or clips of it, but it's up to a court and a legal system to decide if that's fair use. However, uploading the entirety of someone else's video, no matter if you add 20 minutes of your own thoughts and opinions at the end, is a violation of copyright law because you're using 100% of the original video. This isn't something that's up for debate or contentious or could be debunked or anything like that. This is just law. Like, it's not hard. I'm really struggling to understand what you don't understand about this. I feel like you're wrongly misrepresenting what the law is to your audience to not paint yourself as being the bad person or in the wrong in this situation. Every single person that looks at this guy thinks he's a total freak loser. The only people that agree with him are his fucking rabid fan base. Well, that's just not the case, I'm afraid. I mean, millions of people do follow him online. A lot of people do support him. Other creators are actively speaking out against the very same things that Dark Viper is. The problem is, is you seem to think that anyone who tries to take down another channel or take down another video due to copyright or anyone that has an opinion on fair use or copyright law, you seem to think that they're just a fan of Dark Viper. Bring it on as far as I'm concerned. Keep leaving 
believe in your fucking gay little comments. I literally don't care. His fan base is fucking insane. Like, I've never seen anything like it before, where they are like little fucking automatons, like, like bots who think they're fucking copyright experts, right? And they come to your fucking comment section and come to you on Twitter and they're fucking absolutely rabid. It's insane. Never seen anything like it before. Despite actual lawyers saying that what you've done is a violation of copyright law and it isn't considered as fair use, you're saying that the only people that have tried to communicate with you about this matter are just Dark Vipers fans. You're completely ignoring the fact that a lawyer got involved, a lawyer issued the claim with YouTube, and YouTube also came to the opinion that what you did was a violation of copyright law. So saying that this is all because of his fans is a complete misrepresentation of the situation. Now, one look at your Twitter mentions will suggest that not all of these people are fans of Dark Viper. Obviously, this has gone way bigger than your channel or his channel, and it's reached a slightly wider audience. There are people asking you valid questions and questioning your ethics and morality morality and the legality of what you've been doing, yet you're not responding. There's literally people on social media atting you and people in the comments of your videos that have no idea who Dark Viper is, but they're asking you some very valid questions, but of course you ignore them, you don't respond to them, you just respond to the people that call people gay and say that they've got autism or Asperger's. Why? If there's any signs that you're not capable of being able to address points and dissect people's arguments, this is it. When you have thousands of people that aren't leaving hateful comments, for the most part, a lot of the comments I've seen so far have been people asking you very valid questions and bringing forward very valid criticisms, you're not addressing them. Now, if I was in a situation where a thousand people commented on my videos saying that I was wrong, I was in the wrong, or maybe I should question the way I'm approaching something, no matter whose fan base sent them, that would cause me to pause for a second, look at the situation as a whole, and try and figure out maybe if I am in the wrong. This is so black and white, that you are in the wrong. You downloaded the entirety of someone else's video, you re-uploaded it and added some commentary to it. The entirety of their content was used, therefore you have violated the fair use agreement and this is a copyright law issue, but you will not accept in any way, shape or form that you are in the wrong. I think that these fans are the kinds of people that would cheer on as the um, as a certain as a certain group get called in the 40s in a certain country to clear out certain types of people from the attic. Let's put it that way, okay? So the vast majority of comments are people just saying, well, you did upload the entirety of the video, that doesn't apply to fair use. And a lot of people making very critical and fair points, you're comparing them to that. Really? So him filing this DMCA takedown request happened months ago. It didn't go through because he didn't fill out the fucking form correctly and YouTube didn't think it was legitimate. And after months of badgering, using a lawyer as well, he's managed to uh, get the video taken down. Yes, YouTube finally took down the video because maybe Dark Viper did make a mistake when claiming the video. But as it's been proven, and as YouTube have now confirmed, your video was infringing on its copyright. This is so simple. Like... <laughs> The fact that you can't see this is genuinely worrying that you have a YouTube channel and you're uploading content without even being able to do a Google search of anything to do with fair use policy or copyright law. Another thing that he's fucking said, okay, is that I've admitted, and this is something that his fucking fans have parroted to me as well, his fans are saying like, oh, you've admitted to, to doing illegal content or something. I'm just like, what the fuck did I say that? I am so glad you asked, dude. Obviously, you know, I am biased because I do um react to things i you know feel feel i do a fair use job even though not legally but ethically i kind of react to stuff pretty heavily because legally i think that all of them fall under the same issue with you know full reacting to the content that is exists like if you watch a 30 second tiktok right i don't think that's a big deal and i think ethically or morally it's not that big bit crazy a thing but from an IP perspective, you have breached that person's IP and they could legitimately file a DMCA request against you if they wanted to. Same with Asmongold Reacts. Yes, he talks a lot, but it includes the entire video. I never fucking said I was doing anything illegal. Jesus Christ, these people are insane. Now, for those that are watching this video, if you want to see the rest of the stream, it is linked down below. So the final thing I want to talk about in this video is throughout this video, he criticizes the way people look. He uses the word autism as a way to devalue someone's points or opinions. And to be honest, if you have to get to the point of resorting to insulting people for their appearance, whatever it might be, you've already lost the argument. If you can come back with some solid points on why originally your content was fair use and why it should be allowed to be on YouTube, and you can actually exercise some really good points, then of course, I'll admit I'm in the wrong. And I'm pretty sure Dark Viper would too, if you can come back at him with some solid facts that prove that he's in the wrong. Instead, what you've decided to do is attack him and attack other people for questioning you and saying that it's not a big deal and all of this and trying to downplay the magnitude of the situation. 
fashion. And of course, this does go on to the last point where once again, you insult people's appearances. But let's be honest, dude, you're hardly Brad Pitt. And I'm not either, and I'll take the L on that. I will, but trying to act like you're some sort of 4chan giga chad when you're really not, man. You're just some dude like me who sits at home and makes videos. And we're very lucky to have these jobs, and we're very lucky to be able to exercise our freedom of speech. But sometimes when you're called out for things, it's absolutely fine to admit you're in the wrong. I think the overarching issue here, and the issue that the rest of the community has shared, is because you haven't been able to validate your points and actually present an argument on why other people are wrong, as opposed to just calling them gay or saying they have Asperger's, you're not painting yourself in a good light at all. So I'm going to close off this video with some final thoughts. It's important sometimes to take a few steps away from your computer and look at the real world and the people around you. The people in your chat and the people in your Discord community are not the sort of people that should define you as a person. Some of the stuff that is being said in your chat and in your Discord community is absolutely vile. And I'm saying this as a 26 year old man who grew up watching iDubbbz and Filthy Frank, which was funny when I was 16 and 17 years old, maybe touching 18, 19. But more to the point, I'm shocked to learn that you are a parent. And as a parent, you should be taking more consideration of how what you say online is perceived by other people and the way that you utilize your language and your freedom of speech to just insult people rather than sometimes throwing your hands up and going, I'm in the wrong. Because protecting original creators copyright is really important. Channels shouldn't be able to just steal content from other people. And the more relaxed attitude we have towards this starts to set a precedent where reaction channels can just steal people's videos. And we've already started to see that transition since 2018 to now where reaction content is taking away views in the overall ecosystem on YouTube from original creators. Now, Chud Logic, you need to really think here. Do you make original, exciting videos that overall improve the community on YouTube? Or are your videos just a really cheap attempt of stealing other people's content in order to farm engagement? You may see what you're doing as socially acceptable because the YouTube community has allowed it to continue for so long. That doesn't mean that legally, morally, or ethically, it is right. Overall, I have nothing against commentary channels and people that make reaction sorts of content. I believe that videos such as this or your original video that you made in Dark Viper is okay when exercising freedom of speech and utilizing the clips in context under fair use law, but that's not what you did. You stole the original video, uploaded the entirety of the original video, took some of the things he said completely out of context, and therefore tried to frame his opinion and point of view in a slanderous manner. Like I said in my original comment under your first video, which a lot of people can't see now, your biggest concern here shouldn't be copyright, it should be slander. Thank you all for watching today's video, and I'll see you all in the next one. I promise tomorrow's video will be a GTA one.